Ah, the tropics. Beaches, cold drinks, and lovely, lovely wet. Or rain, sure, we could do that too. We do have some cool music for that though, so let's talk about it. Welcome back to Music Arcade. Hello everyone, I'm Galen the Sound Guy Firestone. I'm Rana Cullen, I bless the rainstone in Africa. And I'm Eddie and I'm feeling moist. No, I, I really don't that. like that Toto song. I really don't like it. I'm like the only person on the planet who doesn't like it, but I really don't like that song. <laughs> I think it's okay. It gets old really fast. It gets old really fast. I don't know. Maybe it's just overplayed, but I don't know. I I I wish I knew why I didn't like it because it's one of the most like simple, basic melodies. I, you know what? This is not a song I need to be talking about right now. That's not in a video. Actually, it is in a video game. It's a Grand Poo World One. And you find me another rain song reference. I do have one in mind, but I am actually going to talk about it in a future track. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Dylan's April Rain. Oh, that's also a good one. Though that's not one Rana would have known. That's what we would know. Nope. Okay, fine. <laughs> you two music people. How about you tell our listeners why there wasn't an episode for the last month instead of being smart oh. asses? Well, actually, there was, because we did our usual two to three week schedule. We're just on week three now, because three weeks ago I was in Vegas and struggling with that whole nonsense. I thought it was week four. No, because last week, week three. was two weeks. This is week three. Yeah. We're yeah, actually on time. We did the, yeah, three weeks ago we did the Galen List episode. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> uh, anyway, why I wasn't here last episode other than my little recorded after-the-fact cameo... Uh, I moved! I am in Honolulu now! Uh, I am no longer in California, I have successfully escaped. And there's going to be a story about that later, is one of these songs, believe it or not. Yeah, oh in retrospect, you should have uh, said something along the lines of, uh, I'm going away. You mean away? That doesn't quite work with my accent, gotta be honest. Yes, yes. That, that You're not French if, enough. Yeah, yeah, that works if the vowel sounds similar, but not in not in American English, unfortunately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that caused a whole lot of strain. I also had um, when I was shipping my and computer strain. over, FedEx decided it wasn't worth protecting at all, and they completely destroyed it. Like we are talking a physically broken motherboard and graphics card, and finding parts on the island of Oahu was a whole thing. So I want to give a big shout out to PC Gamers Hawaii, the only part store on the island who also happened to be employed by really, really cool people. So those you guys shared are great. some photos of the place. That place looks amazing. Yeah, it's got vibe. It's it's got like all sorts of anime and drawing stuff on it there. Does. They got like custom case stuff that I might like. Yeah. So I had to rebuild the whole computer four thousand dollars later. Oh, <sighs> that was a lot of money. Ouch. I did not want to spend that kind of money right now. I'm moving. I'm buying a whole lot of new stuff for a new place with completely different needs than my L.A. place. Yeah. Um, but hey, as a Brazilian citizen, welcome to the tropics. Thank you. It's actually very nice here. And uh, one of the reasons why I like it so much is part of the reason why we're having this topic is that it rains a lot here. In California, like, never rained. We're like super drought number five in a ten-year period. Whereas here it rains literally a little bit every day. And I love that. I'm so happy. I, That's not a I, joke at all. Yeah, no, I can't certainly imagine that being in the middle of a heat wave. Yeah, I'm sorry. That, that sucks what's going on in Europe right now. Climate so change let, So sucks. let's say talking about rain is a deep and profound longing right now. Um, so I was watching, um... This is actually going to be relevant. I was watching Sean Fay Wolf's countdown of the best, all of the best and worst number one hits of the entire 2000s decade, so 2000 to 2009. Uh -huh. And an interesting fact was that apparently uh, Rihanna's Umbrella, uh, every time it was in the top 10 in Europe, you were getting like record rain. So clearly the solution to this <laughs> is to make the radio play that song a lot again so it gets back to the Billboard top 10. That'll solve your problem because... 
Clearly, Brent yes. was even calling it the Rihanna curse. Yeah, exactly. It's the, the modern day rain dance. Yeah. You've cracked the code. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I mean, yeah. Europe could do some weird stuff. If they could kick Rage Against the Machine to number one over Christmas, just to spite Simon Cowell one year, like, okay, you know what? Y'all oh got some that's that. That's probably one of the best reasons to do that. Right? So... In light of our rainy, or in Rana's case, utter lack thereof life, uh, we decided to do an episode about rainy stuff. Yeah, it turns out uh, it's a thing that has... In, in my research, I think what stood out the most was uh, how a singular meteorological event... Uh, there was probably one too many syllables then, but uh, no matter. Uh, a single meteorological event uh, can mean a lot of different things depending on the situation, the game, and uh, the intensity of the rain. For sure. And um, in my case in particular, every time I hear this sound effect, and this actually caused me problems when selecting songs for this episode, Every time I hear that sound effect of rain going down, immediately I start hearing that strumming. Immediately I start And we end up in Zozo from Final Fantasy VI with Slam Shuffle, a truly incredible song. And specifically, I grabbed the Pixel Remaster remix because the last time I talked about the Pixel Remaster on this show, I was dunking on the opera. But I really kind of want to show off that, no, that was a fluke. The rest of the soundtrack is actually really, really good. Yeah, like, it's uh, not always, oh, this is way better, oh, this is way worse. Uh, but uh, a lot of tracks have, hmm, I like this part better, but this I could do without. For instance, for this one, the uh, strums at the beginning, I love what I did to that. Mm -hmm. But the main instrumentation, I'm a bit less into it than the original uh, version. I actually disagree on that. I think this is actually a superior remix from where I'm sitting. I like the variety of instruments. Like, the second time it goes through the loop, it actually changes its lead. It goes yeah, to kind of a sax great. thing that I think is actually really neat. And it's especially fitting given how uh, you stay in uh, this city for long stretches, so there's yeah. time to loop. Yeah, so I'm actually, like, very, very happy with... Um, with the way that song sounds and the way uh, it works and how it, uh, the context of it in game. Like, I know I'm talking about a classic game that's like 30 years old now. Good God, it's 30 years old. <sighs> I played that game when it first came out. I am old. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I, this is for some inexplicable reason, the quintessential rain song for me. I mean, I say inexplicable, but like the city's always raining. Yeah, no. So it, it's catchy. It is very catchy. This is this it's is one of Uematsu's like kind of unsung greats, I think. It it feels very bluesy. Like I, I we're talking Final Fantasy, so as always, I'm the one out of my depth here. But right. it feels very bluesy, and I love blues. So it's can, a, a very fun song. I can hear that. Yeah. Yeah, and like uh, it makes sense given uh, what the city is about. Mm -hmm. It's full of let's say down on their luck people that uh, are kind of gathered there, and it's... Rana? Uh, yeah, no, I'm trying to think, and I just crushed a brain-wise mid-sentence. Got it. Like, I thought I was going somewhere, and then I didn't. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you just shut off so quickly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not the internet, that's just my brain. Fair enough. Um, the second biggest carrier of data. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, 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 the second this topic was decided on, this was the first song on my list, and I immediately threw it on there. Uh, which feels right, because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of obvious, but at the same time, like, I don't know. I, I I don't have much to say on this one. It's just sort of one of these like perfect chill and listen to it cool songs. 
Yeah, like as far as uh, places uh, with rain goes, a city with uh, permanent rain is a pretty good candidate. Yep. Fun fact, I actually uh, had a third song in mind that was another city of permanent rain, and then I rejected that one for other reasons, which I'll get into later. So, apparently, like, that was kind of on my mind. Mm, I guess that means we should transition into the next song? Yeah, I think so, because we all just kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, shall we go from a place where there is own always rain and versa a rain related track to a track that sounds like it's raining even though it isn't necessarily the case oh boy uh so uh, before we get into the the song proper i just want to point out the irony because uh, my city is known for its rainfall mm-hmm. and rana is the one currently experiencing a lack of rain and i had the least rainy tracks on on this you guys are gonna notice as we go on that i will have to bend over a lot to find excuses as to why i brought certain tracks today this right. at least is not one of those that this one is fairly understandable because uh it's from minecraft and it's actually from the earlier um minecraft soundtracks rather than the recent yeah. patches so, as any Minecraft player knows, you don't control what uh, what music we'll be playing. The game pretty much goes, I will play this, and you are gonna suck it up, because you will listen to this. Fair. And the song in question is from a uh, volume beta called uh, Aria Math. Aria Math. Uh, I have no idea how C418 matters to pronounce this. I mean, uh, Aria is the word that's being used. Yes. Yeah, but Aria math, Aria math, doesn't make much sense anyway. No, that's definitely uh, a word salad title if ever I saw one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't, you're not even prepared for what's coming next. I mean, you're right, considering that I also gave a pretty word salad one as one of my picks. Can we continue with this and stop talking about word salads now, please? Thank you. Sure. Uh, out of the uh, original two albums, uh, this is one of the most chill tracks to me. Right. And uh, I-, I just love the way it starts. I think that's a uh, hang drum. Uh, it's some sort of metal uh, steel drum. I think it's a hang drum by the sound of it. Uh, and I-, I-, I just love that instrument, to be honest. And it, it gives a very... Um, the general track gives off a very chill, somewhat melancholic vibe, which is something I always associate with uh, with rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and that in uh, instrument really adds uh, this uh, percussion, but with that incredible softness to it uh, that uh, really works to for some gentle rainfall atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fact that you, if it is a hang drum, I'm making assumptions here. So I'm making assumptions that it is a hang drum or at least a s- sample of a hang drum. But if it is a hang drum, it's also, uh, despite being called a drum and being a drum, it is played uh, by beating a finger at a time for uh, each note rather than having sticks or whatever. Right. So that kind of adds to the delicate vibe that rain often gives gives off, which further makes me associate this track with rain, even though you can very much hear this when it's completely sunny outside in Minecraft. Yeah, that always struck me as, like... Yeah, I mean, it's early Minecraft. They weren't really paying attention to music... Um music programming, they were just throwing songs at it. Uh, yep. I, I will say I mean, that on an objective level, that bothers me, but I, sorry, on a subjective level, that bothers me, but on an objective level, I'm like, it was early version of an extremely indie game before it got huge, so like, yeah, they're gonna cut quarters, and I get why they cut that one. 
Yeah, and eventually they did things like uh, add uh, dimension-specific music, and of course the most uh, adjustable way uh, you can play music track is by placing jukebox yourself, right. which is in line with how Minecraft works. Right. But as far as the overall goes, it's... Uh, Here's some tracks. They're gonna fail whenever, wherever. Enjoy. Yep. Or don't. I don't have much, much else to add to this. Uh, I just, I just really like this track. It's, it's very, a chill very track. Calm. It, yeah, it's it is very quite possibly one of my favorites from the whole C four eighteen soundtrack. Yeah, it's a very nice, gentle, and subtle track. And I think all of those qualities are for weak people and cowards. Anyway, here's some Metal Gear Rising Revenge and soundtrack. Yeah, that is um the exact opposite of this one. This is about as far from chill as it gets. This one, like, the yeah. second yeah. that opening went, I'm, like, already headbanging. Yeah, to, I know, to those it's in awesome. the audience, listen to the, the playlist alongside the episode. Prepare for mood replash. Yeah, th there's. Yes. this is a big difference. I'm a little surprised this one's here and not um, next to another later track. Um, But, uh, yeah, this one just goes hard from the get-go. And I, I, I guess because the guy's name is Monsoon, I have not played this game. I need to play this game. Yes. I'm a big Metal Gear fan and I'm a big Platinum fan. Mansoon. Somehow this just never came together for me. Incredible. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's uh, uh, a scene. Uh, well, it's the uh, boss track for when you fight Monsoon, at least the vocal version. So you, it's uh, it escalates up to that point in the last part of the fight. Uh and even before that, uh, rain already starts pouring as uh, a bit of character development happens, during which the now legendary phrase uh, "memes the DNA of the soul" is uttered. Boy, and, that uh, really foresaw the twenty first century, didn't it? Oh, that it did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it basically. Uh, has the fight start with uh, the main character embracing his uh, more uh, rampage murder berserker kind of uh, uh, aspects to it instead of rejecting them mm -hmm. and uh, that is reflected by the music being incredibly intense yeah i was i was saying before the, uh before we start recording that, this is probably going in my workout playlist. I just need to find out if it's on Spotify. It is. Good. But it uh, is, I, because I really... uh, Metal Gear Rising uh, came really quickly in my recommended soundtracks there. That makes sense. Yeah. Um. Uh, another thing uh, I just want to uh, bring up... Uh, it's, it's it's a weird take, but um, as I was li listening to this, of course I was going okay. Instrumentation is cool. Let's wait for the vocals. I, I know this this game soundtracks uh, mostly comprised of either either alternative metal or even new metal sometimes. Yeah. Or new mm -hmm. metal ish. So I'm a bit weary of those uh, genres nowadays. But when the the vocals kicked in. My first thought was, have you guys have you guys heard of this uh, dude named uh, Ron Wasserman? Oh, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> Power Rangers. Man. Oh yeah, 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 that guy. I, I was instantly thrown back to uh, the Power Rangers SPD theme, which was oh. his grand return to the franchise after years away from it, and also an amazing track, by the way, and. I I just love this. Hey, look, I'm gonna say it. The Power Rangers main theme is still very good. <clears throat> and that guitar is awesome. Yeah. I still can't take it seriously, but I will admit it's composed very well. Oh, I'm not asking to take it seriously. Don't okay. worry about it. It's just good. It's fun. And that it's it a piece of its age. 
Yeah. Uh, this but didn't didn't bring me back to the original series. It was uh SPD. Yeah, of course. Was I think around two thousand five ish, maybe two thousand seven at most, somewhere around then. I think it was really it came out, and it was the first time Ron Wasserman came back to the series after, I think about a decade away. Um, and that theme is also really really good, and the vocals for some reason. I just instantly connected one to the other. Weird take, I know. But this one is much more energetic. For obvious reasons. This is actual metal. And yeah, and actual bus fight music. Actual yes, it's, it's, it's not meant to sell you. Music. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to sell you. A, it's not meant to sell you a show like the main theme to Power Rangers. Right. It is just meant to get you in the, the mood for... Or fighting, so of course, yeah. of course, it's much and, more energetic. Uh, and to place a bit more the situation, uh, that kicks in after a transition phase, which involves the uh, enemy you're fighting, Monsoon, throwing agglomerated pieces of buildings and cars at you repeatedly. That sounds right for this game, for what I've seen of it. Um, yeah, exactly. And one of the things that uh, is uh, related to that music and uh, the rain part in particular is uh, the Zandatsu mechanic, which is how you can slow time and uh, direct uh, sword slashes uh, in whatever directions you want. And it's just something that works perfectly with the rain because the rain drops suddenly st stop becoming noise and start becoming actually tangible and you can slash through them so i am 100 percent sure that uh they uh, put a scene uh, with heavy rain as part of uh, the necessary parts to go through in the game to show that off i believe that Hashtag physics yeah I, I really do believe that. I, I've got to be honest, I really do like this song, but prior to this, my only real exposure to this soundtrack was, of course, the famous Rules of Nature, which everybody of knows. Course. Um, and uh, let's just say there is a definite vibe to this game that I that kind of speaks to me on a primal level. This song yeah, in particular... And some, uh, some of the tracks do change the vibe a little. Okay, well, I mean, I'm looking forward to experiencing that at some point in the future when I finally get around yep. to playing this. But, um... I don't know, this one really does just sort of click with me. I don't know, I, I, I don't really have much to say on it, much like the last song. Like, it's very good, but I, there's nothing really to deep dive here. This is just a banger. Like compositionally, it's just good a, enough for me. Yeah, compositionally, it's just a really good alt metal track, and I just you know, yeah. there's no reason for We've me to. We've of course a lot of uh, electronic uh, elements to it due to the futuristic settings. I mean, I've got to be honest. I don't think I listen to a metal band IRL that doesn't have a keyboard as part of its setup. Yeah, so. but you gotta admit the fury are very present. Oh yeah, I mean that's a cool. That's a cool vibe for it. Yeah, exactly, and gives this whole back-and-forth uh, vibe that uh, suits the back-and-forth of a duel between two people. Mm -hmm. Also, shout-outs to us having two new sounds to the Ranakel beatboxing soundbox <laughs> collection. Hey, it's ever-building. It is, you're, you're not wrong. <sighs> anyway, let's move on to... Uh... A truck that's more of an atmospheric one, though still pretty active due to the franchise it comes from, of course. Yep. Yeah, ironically, we're going from, from that track to Rockman, and this rocks much less. Um, so, uh, Mega Man X6, the game known for being pretty bad, but with a pretty awesome soundtrack. I liked it better than X5, but yeah, sure. I I can't comment because I have nostalgia glasses on that one. I played X6 before X5 or X4. Anyway, uh, so 
some of you who may have played the game might be thinking, hey, Rainy Turtloid, he has rain in the name and he has rain in his stage. Uh, no, Commander Yan Mark, um, whose stage is on a rainforest, and uh, he, he does get the rain gimmick in his stage if you beat uh, Rainy Turtloid first, but that's beside the point. I just feel like this song is much better as a rainy song than Rainy Turtloid's theme. It's yeah, like the calmer. the scenery of the rainforest is uh, put down immediately. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Rainy Turtloid's uh, track I find is a bit too energetic for a Raimi song. Yeah, this one I I vibe much more. I mean, you say that, but we just got through one of the most energetic rain songs on the planet. Yeah, yeah I I, I, I hadn't seen Manakel's my... picks before we got into this. <laughs> Yeah, and that's kind of my point, that there's different levels of intensity. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, this one is... Uh, it still has some energy, because after all, it is a uh, theme to a stage from a run-and-gun game. Uh, Mega Man without energy in its soundtrack would feel very weird. I Mega Man X in particular. one of the more oh, yeah. chill ones. No, I believe one of the more chill ones is Chill Penguin's theme. Hey! I was going to say, without joking, that, you know, Bubble Crab's theme is about as chill as it gets for Mega Man X2, and that one's... Absolutely. An yeah, that one's an all-time classic. But yeah, this one has that tropical uh, feel down to a T. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm more familiar with the remix from the... Uh, from... Uh, what was that OC remix album called? Was that Maverick Hunter X? I think that was. I think so. Didn't they release multiple albums anyway? I only remember the first big one. I, I haven't checked on their albums since then. I mean, not for a while. I don't want to say since then. But um, I need to do that. I'm getting, getting ahead of myself. But um, this is one of the first times I've really kind of deep-dived into the original. And uh, yeah, it holds up really well. All right, then let's move on to... Uh... Uh, an Eddie Peak into an Eddie Peak? No, wait. But this piano, it sounds like an Eddie Peak. Oh boy. Uh, no, Galen, this one's my Galen, explain pick. yourself. Okay, well, uh, it's a word salad title because it's translated from Japanese to English really clunkily. The melody of water will lead the way. And that's the, like, more clear translation. The one on the actual album is, like, way crazier. I, I don't have that available right now. Um, and this is from Tales of Zestiria, a bad game with an incredible soundtrack, which features, hey, guess what, our perennial punching bag and guy we love at the same time, Otoi Sakuraba, as well as the criminally underutilized Goshina in their big combination factor. I, I've featured songs from this particular soundtrack before. It is by far and away my favorite uh, Tales soundtrack. Um, yeah, like... You, you can use it multiple times because it's good. It's really good. Um, so there's actually, like, this is the Elemental Water Tower theme. And yes, there's piano and some cool string stuff going on. And the song itself is great. But it doesn't fit really with rain in-game. My context for this one comes to entirely outside of it. And I'm going to explain that story now because I've been holding on to this one for a bit. Please do. Okay, so once upon a time... I was flying home to what was my home at the time in Los Angeles. I can say that's no longer the case. Yay. I I was flying in from somewhere. I don't remember where. And I get a lift to go back to my house. And the guy puts on the radio and frickin' Hotel California is playing. <laughs> oh, boy. And I think that that Oof. was the moment in my mind that I'm like, I need to actually leave now. This is... If this is happening and the radio is doing this to me and saying you can never escape, I need to spite this song. I need to spite this quick Which you did successfully. Which I did successfully. Uh, fast forward several months to when I'm here like two weeks ago and I'm getting my other computer, my bedroom computer set up. And that one actually survived just fine, believe it or not. That one had no problems getting back up and running. I was up on the, the re rebuilding my desk in that room was harder than rebuilding the computer. Um, and I 
I set that up and I I'm like I go out to get a cup of coffee or something and it starts raining on me at like four in the afternoon and it was sunny everywhere else and I'm like this is cool I like this I come home I go to my bedroom computer I hit my video games playlist and this song starts playing I just oh. crack up I'm laughing for a good ten minutes oh that's adorable um so. It wasn't my first rain shower on the island, but it was definitely my first music-related incident involving rain on the island, which seems like an overly narrow superlative, but to be perfectly honest with you, it rains so much that there's plenty of, like, crosstalk with that, so... It's actually a pretty fair combination of events. Um, from an actual song That's standpoint, nice. this one is a very big standout for me on the soundtrack regardless. Yeah, like, uh, before it uh, escalates uh, something like halfway through, mm -hmm. uh, it does kind of fit the mood of a rainy theme. Yeah. Uh, as long as it's like rain falling on a ruined temple or something like that. Yeah. Uh, In-game, this is actually dynamic. This is a tower and a teleport puzzle at the same time. Um, hmm. and let me tell you, if you can't figure out the gimmick with the teleporters, this will drive you crazy. But once you do, it's actually a pretty straightforward dungeon. Oh, great. I hate that place already. Great. Um. So do I. <laughs> Sorry. Ne next, you're gonna tell me there's uh, water puzzles, too. There are some block puzzles, but I don't think any of them are water puzzles. Um, As an aside on the music, going back to it, yeah, I was uh, about to go back to it. Actually, this hellish tower, uh, I, I do like how it uses a lot of the higher notes on the piano. Yeah, for some reason, my mind instantly associates the higher notes, specifically on the piano, uh, with like raindrops falling, as if each note being played being played was a raindrop falling on the ground. I yeah, think that's yeah. a very reasonable association. I would agree. Um, but what I was trying to say when I got into describing the dungeon itself is that the song in-game is actually dynamic. It adds layers as you ascend the tower. Uh, that's not oh, reflected in the soundtrack sweet. version. Of course. Um, it's hard to do that on an album. It is very hard to do that on an album. Uh, in fact, it's borderline impossible to do that on the album. I've basically never heard that done. But yeah, when you're down at the bottom, it's literally just the piano, some strings, and the oboe, and that is it. Um, it doesn't start adding the vocal pads or any of the synth harmonies or any of the additional strings until you're near the top. Um, That's and I, a nice way to build up anticipation. It is. Um, one more reason why I absolutely love this soundtrack. If I could have gotten Tales of Arise with a soundtrack this good, that would probably be one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, yeah. Because my biggest complaint about uh, Tales of Arise is that Sakuraba kind of phoned in the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack is okay. It's fine. It's not offensive. Yeah. There's like a couple exactly. of songs that are legitimately good, but there's also a whole bunch that are just sort of there. Yeah, very much so. And I'm like, hey, congratulations, you're rescuing the Tales franchise. Can the soundtrack please reflect that? Instead, arguably the worst game to play in the entire franchise has the best soundtrack. What happened here? This is a mystery. Yeah, it really is. Um, but yeah, no, uh, this, this game is associated with rain IRL for me and not rain in-game, because it does not actually, I don't think, rain inside that dungeon. I don't actually remember. It probably doesn't. Besides, I eliminated one of my prospective tracks because it was inside, and so it was water filtration and not technically rain. <laughs> so, rain inside of a dungeon, not rain enough for me. I have standards, sir. You know what? I've been in some buildings in Minecraft that are so big, clouds have actually entered and it does rain inside. So, Ooh. you know, there is actually an exception to every rule. Indeed. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and pass it on to your pick, which is almost what I would have picked. And I kind of regret not thinking of it because I was having a lot of people figure it out. Yeah. Beneath the Mask, the rainy version, obviously. And uh, I, 
I think this one is uh, going to be a bit of a discussion point. A discussion point about Persona 5 soundtracks between you and me. Shocking, I know. Right. It's not like we've been here before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't like this version. Really? Yeah. And uh, I think it's interesting that I don't like it this way. Huh. Let me explain. Please. Uh, so, for those that don't, that don't know, the track uh, Beneath the Mask uh, plays uh, when you're just uh, uh, hanging out uh, in, your, in the bar that uh, is uh, your home throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a pretty relaxing atmosphere. And uh, the track uh, changes a bit uh, when uh, rainy days happen. And uh, that's the result, which is more subdued, more intimate, and uh, it set up the atmosphere of uh, hanging out inside while the rain is uh, tapping at the windows very well. Right. I love it. But why did I say I don't like it then? That's a very good question. Because uh, I uh, was talking about the track bag itself. Because there's something that's missing from the track by itself, which is the rain sounds that you hear every time you hear the track in game. Uh -huh. Without the sound of rain in the track, I feel that track is fundamentally missing something and that the lack of rain exposes it for something that's more boring, repetitive and uh, kind of stifled than it actually is in game. You know, I actually have two things I, I can say here. Go on. The first, first the quick comment. Uh, as uh, the YouTuber uh, Todd in the Shadows would say, this is very much a vibes song. And I'm usually known for liking vibes songs. This didn't do very much for me. Ironically, my first contact with this track was, was actually a cover similar to uh, Galen's first contact with the, the Mega Man X6 track being also a, a cover, uh, mine was the DJ Cutman cover. I think the, the song is... His version of the song is sung by Dodger, the YouTuber. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. oh, I but, know her. Uh, Sounds the, right. I know the, she did a cover of that track. Yeah, the, the kind of ironic part of that uh, that cover is that the cover is actually based on the regular version of Beneath the Mask, but it has yeah. rain sounds in the back. And I love that. I love the ambience of that cover. Yeah, because the rain sounds are important to this track. And they fit in the original as well. They don't... Uh, they don't need to be stripped down this much for them to fit in. Okay, I wanted I... Uh, as one. Oh no, go ahead, uh, Galen. I was about to say. I guess I'm the only one here who actually likes this song kind of on its face. I don't love it or anything. Like I totally get your guys' complaints, and the rain sound effect would have been very uh, welcomed here. But I don't mind just listening to this one. If it comes up on my playlist, I don't tend to shift it away. I wouldn't yeah. shift it away either. To be honest, it's not that uh, I don't have a, a negative reaction to it. It's yeah, just exactly. that, that feeling of I've I've heard it done better. Hmm. And mine is the feeling of uh, I could go for the same track cut in half length fries. And uh, set for oh yeah. Uh, it was also my second pick for a rain-related uh, kind of atmospheric track because I think an important part of rain in video games is uh, that comfy experience. And uh, the other track uh, I would have picked if I didn't remember that this one was better fitting uh, was one from Phoenix Wright in which there is no rain and that isn't inherently rain related but uh, it's uh, a Godot's theme, Fragrance from Dark Coffee which is m almost mimetically 
associated with adding some rain sounds in the background and enjoying that jazzy version hmm. of that track. And this is kind of the same thing. The, uh, it's a very good uh, track to uh, chill inside with some rain sounds, natural or added or in-game. I I can definitely see that it's it's very uh, for a rain song it's it's warm like it it brings a sense of it brings a sense of warmth. Uh, when yeah, you listen to the it. the rain is on the other side of the window. Pretty You're much. You're not getting rain down. Unlike the next track, which sounds very much like you're being rained on at a very dramatic moment. Except you actually aren't. <laughs> um, this is a uh, reminiscence from Sukuden 2. And it's... Um, well, to describe it, I think I'll have to uh, use an, an anime meme of sorts. Oh no. So, oh no! I Proful know the one you're talking about. You're going to talk about Full Metal Alchemist, won't you? Full Metal Alchemist and Roy Mustang. Yeah. Did you guess it, guess it right? Obviously, because it it is a very similar thing. It is sunny outside, and the feeling you get is, well, it feels like it's raining. Uh, much like in the meme where Roy Mustang is trying to hide the fact that he's crying and he says it's a terrible day for a rain. Um, this song actually plays uh, in two different places in the game. Uh, this specific specific version actually isn't uh, played uh, in the scene I've been describing, which is a sunny scene. This one actually play plays in the opening credits. And oh, okay. Wait, so we're talking about a song that happens in a scene you're not talking about where it doesn't rain. Here's the thing, though. Both the opening credits animation and the actual scene within the story where it plays, they both sort of uh, hinge on the emotion of your character not knowing whether his childhood friend is alive. Right. Uh, the opening... Uh, the opening... Uh, the credits, opening credits to this game, not to be confused with the uh, cinematic from the main menu, but the actual credits, they play after you jump with your childhood friend into a waterfall to try and save yourselves, and... You don't know whether either of the two are alive. Of course, it's an RPG, so you know you were alive by, you know, rules of the genre. Right. Conventions of the genre. But you don't know if the other guy survived. And the entire cinematic is in sepia tone and showing uh, big events as they grew up from pretty s small kids to the teenagers they are in the game. Yeah, almost as if uh, they're having a reminiscence. Exactly. Uh. And uh, the second time it plays, it actually has more strings to it. Uh, it plays when this... Uh. It plays when this childhood friends of, a friend of yours uh, leaves or sort of disappears uh, in a battle. Mm -hmm. And you... Uh, your character and his uh, stepsister are waiting outside a big city for this childhood friend of theirs. And, like, the sun starts going down and down and down, and it, you start losing hope that the, the guy is even alive. Uh, so it's very much that vibe of, like, it, it's a terrible day for rain. Like, you yeah, are... Mood -wise. Moodwise, it kind of reminds me of uh, that scene in uh, Final Fantasy VII of uh, Iris's uh, adoptive mother that's 
waiting for for her husband to return to the war uh, from the war and just not seeing him uh, go down that train every single time he checks that that's pretty much what it represents in the game it's sort of that uh, uh, the longing to see the guy again mixed with uh, remembering the good times from the past and not knowing if they're still alive to begin with but still hoping that they are still being there hoping that they they come back and uh, then he's alive and that's bad news actually yeah, yeah you're not wrong uh, at the start it's actually good news that he's alive but uh, you assume yes. that it's bad news the, the way he survived is bad news but that's spoilers right but yeah it's a it's a fairly sad song and it's very much one of those uh, rainy mood songs where it represents well, that melancholic and very sad side of a rainy day. Yeah, exactly. I was about to correct. That's uh, one of the possible rainy moods, but as we're covering, there's many moods uh, under raindrops. And that's certainly one of the sad ones. Uh, if uh, you didn't have that pick, I would have scrambled for something equally sad. So thank you for picking that. There we go. United in our sadness. Hooray. I'm going to take another sip of my Now Arizona. let's go for something a bit more upbeat, right? Uh, well, um, it's another one of my picks. And um, you can check off your bingo card. We already had a Final Fantasy track. We had a Sakuraba track. Now we have a boss track. So, we've hit the trifecta for me. Hmm. A Metal Gear boss track. Can say I can picture a rainy mood track from that weird combination that we'd never have already talked about in this episode. Right? I was a little surprised that when you put together production order random, we're going to just look behind the curtain a little bit here, that you didn't put the two Metal Gear tracks near each other. Like, they're on opposite sides of the episode. I don't necessarily mind, but I almost feel like... The compare and contrast was kind of obvious? I suppose so, I suppose. I admit my main preoccupation was uh, to uh, spread a hoopy twat. No, I, I totally get that. Um, taking on the Shagahod from Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, a.k.a. the, in my opinion, the only true classic of Metal Gear Solid. Um, people like, uh, people call M SG1, or MGS1 a, uh, classic. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think it was a little too clunky even for its day. Um, and then, obviously, Solid 2 is divisive, but Solid 3 is the one that everyone is like, yes, this is a good game. Um. Yeah, it's the most, uh, consensual pick, I believe. Which yeah. is not a bad thing in this case. No. It's consensual because it's good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and the big one is, uh, this isn't quite the final boss, but it's getting pretty darn close to it. Um, so we're in the end game when this song plays. And right now it doesn't seem very rainy because this is like a big motorcycle chase with you're on a freaking 50 cal blasting things while this tank is chasing you. It's this really just energetic thing, and then you get into the arena and fight it there. It's this giant thing while the sun is just blaring down. But here's that trick. Giant spoilers incoming. So the main guy, Volgan, he's the main bad guy you fight throughout most of this thing. He is afraid of lightning. And when the, uh... And when the boss fight reaches its end, it starts raining, and hey, guess who gets zapped by lightning? Ironic. Right? Well, not so much ironic as Kojima doing the Kojima thing of, you know, we're just going to yes. set something obvious up and have something wacky happen at the very end to kill a boss, much like the I, much like Fox Die in Metal Gear Solid 1. I know writers who use subtext and they all cowards. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I... This was, I will admit, a very last-minute pick, almost entirely because of that one scene. And this isn't even the music that plays during that scene, because I wanted the more, like, 
fun, energetic boss track that leads up to that scene. Um, but man, this is just good at what Metal Gear Solid soundtrack does right. It's got that, like high power strings but nothing too over the top and energetic like it doesn't like blare at you admittedly much like uh much like stains of time did when we were talking about monsoon earlier huh. obviously that was going for a different vibe um like it has the this one has this very uh uh high action but heroic feel to it right yeah, it kind of, like the rest of the game, kind of has that vibe of uh, a Bond movie. Except here, you're at the climax of the Bond movie, and you're having, maybe James Bond is having a fist fight with the villain or something. Yeah, exactly, except and that's in not... A Metal Gear, in a Metal Gear context, a fist fight is you with a an RPG, and the enemy with a huge tank that is going to become uh, the precursor to the Metal Gears, because Kojima. Exactly. Um, although, then again, it's also a Metal Gear game, so you're going to get your close quarters fight towards the end no matter what you do, and you do, but not with this guy. Uh, he actually gets the close quarters fight before this. You beat him in that, and then he gets the tank out. Um, kind of mixing up the formula a little bit, at least with Vulcan. Um... Ah, the memories. Ah, the memories. Man, this was... This was a great sequence. This was one of the all-time, like, classic sequences. And then they just mucked it all up with Guns of the Patriots. God, Metal Gear Solid 4 was a bad game. Like, normally when I say a Metal Gear game is 60% cutscenes, it's a Kojima game. You know what you're getting into. That game was literally 60% cutscenes. That was me screaming, yeah. let me play the video game. I move four feet and then something else happens. It's like, no, even this game, which has a lot of cutscenes, still gave me a few screens between them, right? Let me actually play? Anyway, um... Yep, no arguments for me here. Yeah, no, this, uh... This is kind of one of the crowning moments of the Metal Gear franchise, both in terms of the game itself and this sequence. Because it, it does kind of retake the motorcycle sequence from Metal Gear Solid 1, but a million times more interesting. Um, in part because it's using the massive power of, at the time, the PlayStation 2. Which was a massive jump in power from the PlayStation 1, for sure. Um, if there's any game in this franchise that deserves a full-on just remaster it's this one and uh it would be amazing if it had a, a remaster yeah i mean if there's one thing konami's doing these days it's remastering stuff um and yeah, yeah this except, song... you know licenses yeah licenses um also, they seem to have a particular hate for anything Metal Gear related, which, you know, in a just world, we'd have a situation where Kojima can maybe find a way to buy the license back. I don't see that happening, but, you know, maybe. Um, yeah, it's just, it's good. It's a good song for a good sequence in a good game, and, uh, yeah, I really do have nothing but love for it. I'm I'm very I it was a last minute pick and entirely because of just one scene after this song but even then it's like I feel like it clicks. Yeah. It, if I was to make a complete stretch, I'd say it's a track that represents more the idea of uh, running through the rain because you're late for your bus. Hey, that's the I best I've got. It's not bad. I would kind of say I would kind of say it's it's less you're in the rain and it's more the rain god is in front of you. You are about to fight him. Good luck. Oh, darn it! I could have used Susano's theme from Warriors of Energy Three that just got a remaster release too. That was a song yeah, I could have used. That's a very light theme, very uh, full of levity and. Uh, <laughs> Very high-pitched vocals. <laughs> yes, all of those things, except the exact opposite of all of that. Anyway. Oh, for the record, I did mention Susano, just not the right one. Correct, you did, and I did not put 
<laughs> either of those together until Eddie said that thing right then. So yeah, you know what? Funny no, I stand by my pick anyway. The three of us form a weird hive mind where uh, we all get the same idea, but with a delay. <laughs> right? All right, I think I've right? talked about Colonel Vulgan enough. Let's go ahead and talk about... Uh, so, during the research for the title, uh, for what tracks to pick, uh, I racked my brain a little more, and then it hit me. Wouldn't it be funny... If there was some sort of video game that had rain right there in the title. So you're a Quantic Dream fan, huh? <laughs> oh, that would have been a good one too, actually. Would it have? I don't remember that soundtrack at all. Well, me neither, but at least it would have been present were it not for this game being a better pick in every single way. Oh, I fully agree. Although, uh, the rain part of the game title isn't meant to evoke literal rain. According to uh, a mailed reply from the devs as to the question why is the game titled this way, uh, they answered that it's meant to uh, evoke uh, first the uh, shower of supplies from the explosion of the transport ship above the planet uh, the uh, events are going on. Mm -hmm. Which justify why there's crates everywhere. Right. And also the possibility, given that it's a uh, roguelite, to have a terrible run akin to a sudden unexpected rainy day. So that explanation is pretty nice. Now, if it was only... Oh, there's rain in the title. That would already be, be something. But then, enter composer Chris Christodoulou. Which did things like putting rain-related references in every single <laughs> track of the soundtrack save one. And we'll come back to that one later. Uh, meaning that we have uh, song titles such as I was going to say we would come back to a popular pop song reference. One of the track is named The Rain Formerly Known As Purple. Ha! Ha. Uh, there also was one which was changed. It was originally meant to be called The Dehydration of Whisk of Rain 2's main theme by the composer Chris Christodoulou. Except he couldn't title it like that because uh, there's apparently problems with listings if you put the composer name in the title of the track. That's wait. I what? will say I'm I'm a bit surprised you went with Coalescence rather than Tropic of Cancer, considering where Galen is right now. There's a reason for that, and I'll come back to it. Uh, but first, there's also another track name I'd like to mention to emphasize how much that uh, Rain theme isn't just anecdotal, which is a track from Risk of Rain 2 named uh, Petricor V. It's a V, not a 5, originally. Eventually, it became both. Uh, because uh, the composer didn't uh, know by the time he composed the uh, Risk of Rain 1 soundtrack about uh, Petricor, which is uh, the smell of uh, rain on asphalt when it hasn't rained for a while. Uh, so that's a very good name, and so he thought. Uh, and... Uh, as a result, seven years later, when he needed a way to name a track, he uh, put in that as a title. There was, however, a problem which prevented him from just calling it Petrico, which is a Hyperlight Drifter soundtrack, having a track of the same name and having released some time between the two games. So he wanted to distinguish himself and added the V because uh, one of the musical influences uh, that they agreed on with the developer was Vangelis. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And 
people uh, found the track name and uh, some other people either thought it was cool by itself or also didn't know what Petrico was and the V looked like the Roman numeral 5 and the planet naming scheme tends to uh, be in uh, popular science fiction a name, the name of the star, followed by a Roman numeral, numeral depending on how far the planet is in the solar system and uh, eventually back and forth happened and uh, the planet which was previously nameless became canonically named Petruco 5 because of the name <laughs> of the track of its own game. But here's the thing. The choice of an early access development. We're not talking about Petrical 5. We're talking about Coalescence from Risk of Rain 1. Yes. I just wanted to uh, impart uh, uh, first facts that we have available thanks to the uh, amazing commented soundtrack by the composer. And uh, also impart the importance of... Uh, uh, the soundtrack for the game as a whole, uh, the most reputed uh, track of the original game being Coalescence, uh, which is the track for the last level of the first game. It's also important as uh, uh, why this is my pick, not only because it's well regarded, but also because that last level is the only level in the game where there is actual rain. There isn't any rain in any other part of Risk of Rain 1 or 2. Huh. That I didn't know. I, I, I've i seen gameplay of that game, or at least the first one, several times. I've literally never seen anything on 2 other than one screenshot, which is kind of incredible that I somehow managed to dodge it that well. But I, I thought there was rain in the other levels. At least that's what my brain was telling me. But did I misremember that? You did. Okay. You did. There isn't rain at any other point, but uh, that one final level of Risk of Rain won. Huh. And uh, that track that, uh, like a lot of tracks in the game, uh, a play on the... Uh, game's main motif, the purum purum, uh, he eventually grew uh, so popular it he almost resented it. Uh, I mean, it's catchy, it's weighty, it's uh, a change of pace compared to what comes before, especially since uh, buses have their own tracks. So mm -hmm. you're going from a bus track to this extremely chill theme, at least at the start. Yeah, it and, starts chill, uh, but gets real... gets up there as it goes. It, it definitely has yeah, some rising it action, which has been, really hard. Which has also been a recurring theme of this episode, I've noticed. Like, just about everything has rising action, and it seems like your biggest complaint about any of the songs you talked about is that it didn't feature that. Hmm, that's a fair point, actually. I didn't notice that. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, this uh, escalation which makes sense given the gameplay uh, where you're in a permanent race against the clock mm -hmm. uh, as the difficulty increases uh, according to the time spent on, uh, on the levels. And uh, that level structure, I think, is also a part of uh, why this track has this unique impact. Because uh, I said there's a, a big play on the main uh, leitmotiv, the purum purum, uh, but it's very much less present in the levels from uh, uh, 2, 3, and 4. That's the fifth level. Right. And uh, But it's very much present in the first level and in this level, which is uh, an impactful return uh, which also makes sense given that you can loop in the game. Uh, but what I think uh, corresponds the most uh, to uh, that uh, atmosphere and that impact is when you first arrive at that level. Because at this point, there's not only the four stages that, that are behind you. 
but there's the 20 or 30 ones behind you that uh, had you fail and die miserably <coughs> in order to get the know-how and the right lucky build to arrive at this point. Right. A sort of coalescence of the experience you've accrued until then. Oh, okay, well done. Thank you. I, 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 I think that's the first the first pun in the episode where we are not writhing. We are actually going, mm, yeah, nicely done. I'll take it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the composer uh, eventually uh, had uh, a lot of requests, apparently, to make essentially a follow-up uh, from uh, that track, because uh, Risk of Rain 2 has a different motif. And so making just a follow-up by itself wouldn't work. Right. And uh, he thought the track was uh, kind of complete. Which makes sense, given that it has this escalation, this structure, yeah. this end where the uh, moments you've heard before are repeated but run through a bit crusher. I, I have to be um, honest, considering how different Risk of Rain 2 is, apparently, and how complete this song is, I think a follow-up would be a mistake. And he agrees. Uh, he refused and rejected any request uh, throughout all of uh, Risk of Rain 2's early access life to make a follow-up, because that track was good as it was. And then 1.0 release and the boss fight uh, against the final boss has uh, a track named Con Lentitude Poderosa, which uh, takes back uh, elements from Coalescence, because that's how he rolls. Okay. But he calls it a satellite track rather than a sequel. I'd have to hear the two to compare to see if that's an accurate statement, because there's nothing wrong with reusing a leitmotif, especially when you're in with the same franchise. Exactly. Plus, I believe it's justified by uh, the fact that uh, you uh, battle in order to return to some element of uh, Risk of Rain 1. That makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much it as far as, uh, as, far as uh, talk even tangential to a track goes. Uh, I like it a lot. It's very good. It's chill but intense. It's like uh, walking forward against a uh, a rainstorm that's trying to blow you back. I like it. Yeah, I actually, I actually haven't haven't had many experiences with the uh, or any experience at all with the. Uh, the actual game of Risk mm -hmm. of Rain, but I've I've listened to the soundtrack a lot on its own. It's it's really good, and that that vibe is something that uh, he captures really well, in not just this track, but a few others as well. Yeah, and he's having a lot of fun uh, doing that. Quick anecdote before we uh, go to uh, what comes next: uh, when he released the soundtrack for Risk of Rain One. He added uh, a track, which is the track I mentioned without a rain-related name. It's called Interlude, and it's gibberish when you listen to it. But that's because the track audio isn't what's important. What's important is that in the sound wave, there's written end of part one. That's the kind of nerd uh, Chris Christodoulou is. That's some wild Daft Punk remix nonsense, and I kind of love it and kind of hate it at the same time. <laughs> Sounds about uh, right. I can see that. Okay, then let's move on to some uh, thematically appropriate, oh, thematically inappropriate, no playing. Music Arcade, now playing. Um... So I'm going to be honest, with the move, I've been playing very little. I've been playing Ark Knight's Integrated Strategies 2, which finally came out globally, and um, we talked about that soundtrack at length before, so I'm not going to cover you guys on that one. Yeah, but I want to say, the shop track is really good. The shop track is a jam. That's a very jazzy shop track. Um, 
It's a good soundtrack. It's not as good as as IS-1. I, I think COB's Fungamist had the better soundtrack, but hopefully we get a version of that back at some point and get that theme back. Um, it's a more Eddie soundtrack, however. It is definitely an Eddie soundtrack, and we covered that when we talked about that, too. That said, <laughs> there's something I'm going to talk about that's not gaming-related, but y'all are going to hear me rant about this, so deal with it. You know what I've been listening to a oh lot of? Oh, please tell us. A fucking rooster. This, there's a rooster that lives in an alley behind my building. I am in the, I am in a 15th floor apartment of a high rise. This thing will not shut up. I am a boarding person now because of this <laughs> damn rooster. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I just needed to rant about that. My sleep schedule has, uh, completely turned around. Like, I, I am up at six o'clock in the morning every morning now entirely because of that rooster. And uh, the uh, recording uh, hour for the episode was about two hours from when we generally record it, which was Galen morning if I may wake with some chance. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like in best Galen episodes, started talking. Yeah. Galen we, started. When we uh, should record at this time, Galen would go, "Okay, guys, I'm awake. I need some coffee. Give me about an hour. I'll be with you." Today, Galen was online on Discord about two hours earlier. Yeah. And no, streaming, one, I, I think. But yeah, no, that's. Uh, that's a change for sure. Yeah. Um, there have been a few big life as changes a as a result of moving here, and that rooster has prompted one of them. So, yeah, I can start way earlier than I used to in terms of the live recording, which is good and bad. Um, it's, it, it does leave us in a weird spot because it's amazing for me, but it's awful for Rana, who lives a few more time zones to the east. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, no, it's actually fine for me. It's just uh, early in the evening rather than late in the evening and maybe I'll be able to sleep at one in the morning. Uh, in that case, that all hey. sounds good. I don't mind doing this at this time. Yeah. Like, it's about 11 o'clock local time right now, and this would be, like, we'd be wrapping up... No, it's about 11 o'clock local time, so that means it's about 2 o'clock LA time. We've wrapped up episodes around them before. We actually, like, started late. We were gonna start at, like, 8.30, which is 11.30 yes. LA time, but we ended up starting at, like, about 9.30. Um, just because of oh, at least, stuff happening. At least the conversion would be uh, simple. 8.30 is 8.30 for me. Oh, you're exactly 12 you... hours out now. Yep. Oh, cool. That's all. Depending now, on I'm daylight I'm the one savings. who has to do the math. <laughs> yeah, you're like... Exactly. Seven hours, I think, now? Uh, What time is it for you, for you right now? Uh, 11? About 11 a.m., yeah. Yep. Yeah, seven hours. It's almost 6 p.m. here. Yeah, because you were four o'clock before. Four hours, excuse me. So, hey, now we know. But yeah, um, that rooster needs to not. That rooster needs yeah, so, to so right really now, not. Right now you're playing Arknights and Desires to Murder a Rooster. Pretty much. Uh, I'll be starting some new games. I only just got this computer set up a few days ago. Um, and I have not been back to my full streaming schedule on account of Rye still being in town, and I don't want to, like, not spend time with the dude who came out to in part Enjoy to visit me. his company. So, uh, we'll be getting more regular by the time this episode comes out, I think. I'm sure we can find a rooster murder sim simulator for you. I mean, I could always uh, just play CSGO. I mean, yeah, or... Fair. Or you could, uh, play a Legend of Zelda game and feel like this is a very bad idea to murder a rooster. I could do that too. Um, and unless that game is a Hyrule Warrior, in which case the chicken is Lubu. You're not wrong. Speaking of warrior games, I've played Fire Emblem Free Hopes. How is that? I'm, I'm kind of tempted. It's very good. I've finished an entire playthrough of like... 60-70 hours uh, in a week, 
Wow. And uh, the only reason I haven't started New Game Plus is uh, that I'm pacing myself and waiting for some DLC possibly to go out. Um, uh, also, one of the remix tracks is named Fordland Rain, so I'm staying th- thematic. Nice! And I can still stay thematic for two more games before I also play the Power Wash Simulator. And what's a Power Wash if not Artificial Rain? That's a stretch, but also the- I need to play that game. It's even more of a stretch the game doesn't have a soundtrack. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what isn't a stretch at all, however, is Against the Storm, which is a game in which the central mechanic is rain. And it calls itself a rain punk city builder. Rain punk city builder, okay. Yeah, hmm. and it's also a roguelite. Essentially, you know the cool part of a city builder when instead of uh, having a stable tone, you're just trying to make ends work and trying to resolve crises as they come until you get something that's about stable or something that fails completely? Well, this it, is. Usually I only fail completely, f- but yes. Yeah, well, this is only that part, but repeated with some meta progression. And it's awesome. That just sounds stressful to me, but okay. Yeah, oh, it that is. sounds like my anxiety would flare especially, up a lot. Yeah, especially since it's a race against time. There's this uh, queen entity that's uh, waiting for you to get down with your city settling business, and if you take too long, she gets angry and murders everyone. I mean, I know you're having fun, but I gotta be honest, I hate everything you just said. <laughs> I'm I'm curious, but I don't think I'll play that. I may watch a playthrough at some point. That's about as far I as may I think. Stream I... Storm as, at some point. I would watch that. Sweet. Then I'll then I'll tag you when I do that. If I do that, please do. Also, don't forget that my Discord does have a you know self promotion channel. I don't forget that every time I'm streaming, I send a message this way. Perfect. Uh, I've and also the played meantime, the two games uh, I... that uh, quickly aren't uh, thematically relevant. Uh, Go on. One of which is uh, Into the Bridge, because it's received its uh, free, uh, full expansion size the DLC. Nice. We oh, have I haven't five... heard about that. Uh, it came out like two days ago, and you have five uh... more squads, you have new enemies. Uh, and uh, so far, I've played uh, through uh, two of the squads, one of which is pretty cool. It has missiles that uh, bounce around uh, and uh, uh, just pretty uh, uh, powerful, but a bit complex stuff. And as, tra- as squad, I am literally too dumb to play. Uh, because it relies on teleporting temporary units and also a gun that pieces through the first target it shoots without doing any damage. Oh, that does. Be that honest. sounds like there's some great Pussy. tactics that can come from that, but it also sounds like a real headache if you're like not good yeah, at that sort exactly. of thing. I'm gonna be honest. Considering how bad I am at uh, tactical games, I I'm probably gonna be horrible at that if I try it out. Yep. But it's fun. And lastly, I've played uh, some uh, DJ Max Respect V or 5. Again, with the ambiguous V. Right. Uh, which is a rhythm game that, were, that came up on Game Pass. And uh, aside from uh, some original tracks from previous games of its series, it also has uh, like a couple of League of Legends tracks, uh, promotional tracks, not in-game tracks, of course, the good ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also has three Guilty Gear tracks and, and uh, Guilty Gear skins for uh, your uh, playthrough and everything. So that's pretty fun. Nice. And some tracks for, that I haven't heard since uh, S4 League, of all things. 
Which, given that the game I believe is Korean, makes sense. Yeah. That I'm just happy to be able to uh, play a rhythm game with a nano risk in it. <laughs> anyway, I've played a lot of game, in short, and I'm not going to stop anytime soon because Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming out in under a week and I'm excited. Are you serious? Okay. I am. That, that happened fast. Yeah. I still haven't played 2 either. I have it, I haven't played it. Uh, well, I think you are 100% out of time. Correct. That is accurate. That's a long game. That is. Okay. Cool. Well... Anything you played, Eddie? Uh, uh, well, I've had a very stressful few weeks, so I've been limiting myself to exactly three games right now. They, they pretty much fall into, uh two categories, either extremely, extremely relaxing or extremely cathartic. So uh, I've been playing a little bit, not too much, of House Flipper, which is now mm. on the Game Pass. Cool. And, uh, nice one, nice one. Relax, relaxing game, soundtrack does its job, but... Similar vibe as Power Wash Sim, really. Yeah, it's just chill. Yeah, pretty much. I think uh, Power Wash Simulator came uh, came on the Game Pass yep, right as I was I about it. to play. Yeah, right as uh, I was about to play, um, House Flipper came out. Uh, Power Wash came out. I was like, okay, the the universe is trying to tell me something. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I do intend on playing Power Wash Simulator uh, eventually, but uh, r right now I I haven't been in the mood to. Uh, Try out new things, with one exception being um, just a moment I forget the name. With one exception being uh, Last Call BBS. Oh is, yes, uh, I need to get to this one. Yeah, it's the last game uh, from Zektronics, and yes. last as in actual last. They won't make any more games after this. Unfortunate, but it's a respectable choice. But unfortunate yeah, uh, because they truly made some very unique games. Yeah, they make they make some some pretty interesting uh, puzzle games, and this one is ostensibly a collection of like eight or nine puzzle games, right? Including a couple of solitaire vari variants and a game where you're just uh, painting and assembling Gundam. Uh, minifigs. Yeah, but um, it, it's it's fairly relaxing. I've mostly been uh, out of the 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 games contained within it. Uh, the one I've been playing the most is one called uh, Dungeons and Diagrams. <laughs> I like that is, title. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty fun. It's um. Uh, from the screenshot of it, it looks like. Uh, Dungeon Crawler Picross. Uh, it doesn't really... The, the Dungeon Crawler thing isn't really correct. It's, it's mostly, uh, Picross with some extra rules, uh, and a D&D &D coat of paint. Um, mm -hmm. and the whole, the whole Let's Call BBS thing, it goes for a 90s aesthetic. Uh, it feels like you're you're booting up uh, Windows 95 PC and... No, 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 no. I disagree strongly. It looks like you're booting up an Amiga. Or that. I, I don't know. Or have ZX Spectrum. But yeah, it's it, it's fully retro in everything and the games, when you boot, that, uh, boot uh, the games up, they have... Uh, I think not all of them, but the majority have some uh, screens before you enter the game proper. There are exact, exact copies of um, those uh, <clears throat> for people who may have pirated games or those uh, game cracks. So there's Correct. those graphics and the names of, oh, I'm thanking so-and-so who helped crack Thank this you game to the whole whatnot. Fairlight community. Also, uh, comment in the chat, someone is showing their edge. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. yep. I just thought it was funny, like, 
just from my American perspective, you called it ZX and not ZX, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Ah, yes. Yep. Yeah. Cultural yeah, well, differences, ahoy. I, I, I don't even know whether the the Spectrum came to Brazil, so the Windows 95 I, was my only reference point. But um, You're also a good deal yeah, younger the, than the two of us. Yeah, I mean, not too much, but I, I was around in the in the nineties. I was I was gaming by, it's like the, the last call BBS mostly tries to copy mid to late nineties, and I was I was starting to game, uh, around that time. But um, anyway, uh, those have been the games I've been playing on the Game Pass, and outside of it, I've gone gone back to, uh, last epoch on on Steam. I've oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I have a question about Let's Call BBS. Go on. Soundtrack good? Each game has its own uh, soundtrack. Which I can imagine. Maybe one or two exceptions. Soundtrack and, uh, good? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Uh, one of them... Uh, I, I need to pay more attention to uh, one of the games, so uh, the minigame soundtracks. Uh, the one called, uh, I think it's, uh, The Forbidden Path. Uh, that one seems like uh, I might get uh, something more from it than just we are simulating 90s computers. Uh, the rest is mostly just, this is a 90s computer game, 90s PCs were way behind, uh, consoles, so you are getting... A very retro sound and it's very limited uh, so the the composition is not very elaborate it's very simple it's fun uh, to hear about uh, the <clears throat> time difference because what it was 90s computers and uh, hardware for you i feel like it was a bit of a different time zone for us depending on the arrival and popular popularization of uh, computer material because that feels correct. earlier than uh, late 90s for me in France uh, you are correct in the sense that uh, if I was referring to 90s Brazilian computers that would be the case uh, for political reasons that we will not get into right now but the, the devs have specifically stated that they are based uh, basing their stuff on mid to late 90s from their point of view so mid to late 90s for an american or for a first world country so that's that's what i mean yeah. i don't mean 90s brazilian so. pcs uh but yeah uh the the final game i've been playing has been last epoch again because it's the one arpg i keep going back to and it's cathartic and i have way too many builds that i want to try <laughs> and it's a shame that the, the next patch coming soon won't, uh, will not add any new skills from what the devs have said because it's focused on the multiplayer. It, the game will finally have online multiplayer as of the next patch, supposedly. Wow, but that's a heck of a thing to patch that, in. Yep. Uh, I believe it was their intention from the start because uh, the game already is online only. Uh, you have to log in to, to go into the game. And it's uh, the engine is feels pretty similar to Path of Exile, which is uh, uh, another always online uh, ARPG, right? With social hubs and whatever. So it was definitely something they wanted to do from the start, but uh, the game is in beta, so it took a while from for this indie team to get it done. So it should be coming out soon ish the multiplayer but after that they should be adding uh the few classes that are missing from the game i think there are two or three that uh, are advertised but aren't implemented yet they should be coming after that on the other patch but anyway i, I i'm still having fun with the ones that are are that are already in the game it's uh Really nice to like. I'm playing uh, a void knight who just 
attacks with huge area of attacks and slams the ground with a purple orb and leeches life and then I just swap to another character and, and I'm freezing people with my flying glaive on my on my spell blade and then I'm going to my marksman who's just shooting lightning arrows so you know for a game with relatively few skills for an ARPG he has a lot of variety and that's keeping me very entertaining in the the more stressful days that I've been having. Thank you, Catharsis. Catharsis is powerful. It's one of the main reasons I play Dynasty Warriors games. That it is. And with anyway, that, that, that is all we have time for to... Okay, come on. Now the sun comes out? Alright, gee, thanks. Cool. Anyway, you can find all the songs we just talked about on our YouTube channel, and you can also get in touch with us via email or Discord following the links in the episode description. Have a good one, y'all, and we will see you guys next episode. See you. See you next time.